Doug, John, hey, congratulations for I'm an electric lampshade. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gig. <laughs> it was, I do have to admit, it was quite unexpected. I wasn't sure what I was actually uh, about to about to watch, but we have to ask is what actually sparked this documentary for I'm an electric lampshade? Well, so um, the the whole journey started back in um, late 2014, 2015, when I had the idea to make a private music video for a supervisor of mine who was retiring. Um, and I had worked for him for 15 years. And uh, so that meant, you know, trying out dancing, trying out singing. And I was fortunate enough to have John work with uh, me on that music video. He was our choreographer and provided a lot of creative input on the video. And um, that was how John and I started working together. And the music video was a great success. Um, everybody gave it a standing ovation. And so I kind of caught the bug and kept working with John and um, turned and he turned to me and said, well, what are we going to do, do next? He said, I think we should do a short film. And so the whole idea behind I'm an Electric Lampshade was originally intended to be something like a 20 minute short film with perhaps a music video incorporated into it. And uh, it grew over time into the feature length film that it is today, thanks to John's creative drive and creative input and the great footage that we shot along the way and in some amazing locales. And um, so here we are, Gig. <laughs> John, how, how did you want to craft the story of, of this? Um, it, I mean, I was, I was what it is a documentary. I was watching a documentary and then all of a sudden there was like this narrative story that just, I, I don't even know how you actually start and begin and ended with something like this. Yeah, I mean, we could have gone a couple different routes and one would have been a straight documentary really um, documenting Doug's transformation. And for us, I think the initial nexus was this fantasy Doug had not so much to be a musician all his life, but to not be invisible his whole life. He had was unpacking a lot of feelings, especially after, after a career in accounting, where everybody kind of blends in and colors by numbers and is really trying to fit inside a box, literally, if you think of an Excel spreadsheet or your tax paperwork. And so as Doug and I got to know each other, I felt like this had less to do with a lifelong dream to be a recording artist and more to do with the fantasy that you see when you watch a concert of adoring fans screaming at Michael Jackson or uh, talking heads. And these are the artists that Doug and I talked about as reference points and watched their concerts. So it was just a question of, do we want this to be kind of a really long episode of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy where Doug is transformed into, uh, has this kind of makeover story? Or are we going to tell the pieces of the life and the creative process through more of a music video and fantasy style? But even the fantasy elements are very representative of real life story pieces. So for 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 you, Doug, you couldn't just have a quiet retirement like a regular person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how exhilarating was all of this this entire journey for you? So, um, as I can imagine, with any performer, there are highs and lows throughout all of the journey gig. Um, I mean, it was exhilarating for me to be working with so many people that were so creative who really were outside of people that I that I knew in everyday life, dance coaches, performance coaches, vocal coaches, um, you know, all the all the real life performers that are that are in the film, especially in the Philippines and also in uh, the 
footage that we shot in Mexico City. So having the opportunity to interact with these people and to learn from these people was was one of the highlights for me of making the film. Um, but, you know, with every journey like this, especially when you're completely outside of um, your comfort zone, you go through a variety of highs and lows throughout the entire journey. And, and I certainly did. Um, but, you know, in the end, when we look at what we created, uh, you know, all of us, John, myself, and all the rest of the team that worked on the film, it is quite an amazing journey and uh, it's colorful and it's and it's exciting and it's comical in many ways. And, um, you know, you really couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Most excellent. John, what is the complexities of uh, filming overseas, you know, going to like the Philippines and Mexico for a documentary like this? Should it shouldn't be that easy because most documentarians have struggle, you know, just just for travel expenses. Gosh, on the contrary, I would say shooting in New York is way harder. I mean, there is so much red tape shooting in the U.S. And uh, a lot of that is more flexible overseas. And labor is cheaper, so you have a bigger team supporting you. And that uplifts you while you're, as a filmmaker, to have a bigger team than you could ever have in, in New York or in the States. So identifying the right production, local production company to work with and letting them be our, our trusted partner. Um, our core team in New York was much smaller than the teams we worked with overseas. So we really relied on their expertise in terms of how to operate locally. We didn't have to kind of totally figure out and map that out on our own. It was exhilarating. Now, how did you convince you know, all these other subjects of your film to be a part of the film? Um, and when, and how, how did you make them aware that you're filming a documentary? So it actually was really um, easy for people to understand that what Doug was doing was inspiring. What Doug's message was, was I'm going to go for this and I might fail, I might succeed, but you only live once, so I'm going to try it. And so many people who came onto the project got that right away. They they didn't look at this as, oh, who's this guy and his vanity project? They looked at it like, I want to be that guy when I'm his age. Or one of our dancers who worked very closely with Doug said, this reminds me so much of my mom's story. You know, she had cancer, but it didn't get her down. And she's living a better life now through through the lens of what she went through. Mm -hmm. So Doug went through so much making this film, but at the core was this message of you only live once. So uh, as we say in the film, do what your heart desires. Do, um, you know, in Doug's case, it was on a very enormous level, but the different players in the film especially the cast members we found overseas, were doing the same thing on their scale. So they were able to connect with Doug right away. And, and when Doug and I started talking about making a short film, that was the message. Let's put something out there that could be inspiring to someone. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge audience, but maybe there's a couple people out there who feel inspired by seeing what Doug's journey um, did for him and all the people around him. Wow, most excellent. Doug, tell tell us about this uh this journey of learning to dance, to sing, to choreograph, you know, from 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 all, all from A to Z. I mean, that's a that's quite a feat and all of this is all you, right? Yes. Yeah, it's all me. I, there were no stand-ins for any of the vocals or the dancing or the performing, that's for sure. Um well, you never, I think Ig, you never know what's really involved with that until you actually, you know, go through it and you start learning it and you really, you really understand this tough work. It's really, there's really a lot involved and it gives you a very deep appreciation for all the performers out there, all the singers and the dancers and all the hard work that 
they've gone, they go through and have gone through to get where they are today. Um, now I did a crash course in it, of course. And, um, you know, I, I'm, for a, for a novice, I mean, I couldn't be happier with the results. Um, it, but it's, but it's, it's tough work and, uh, learning, especially to be a performer and to be more vulnerable and to, to, uh, um, you know, follow your coach's guidance and not get in your head about it and try to step outside of what you know, which doesn't help you really at all in this environment. I mean, the corporate accounting environment doesn't help you in the least. So, um, yeah, very challenging all the way, but um, such a wonderful experience, Kate. Wow. John, I understand. I um, I recall that you you mentioned that you helped uh, Doug out on a music video with the choreography. Did you get involved in any of his process during the documentary? Uh, in terms of the like um, dance training, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've worked with um, dancers of all levels for years, so that's kind of my my entry point, having directed theater and dance productions and short films. So that was my area of entry working with Doug. And I think for us, kind of getting choreography down was a more challenging part. Um, trying to get someone to be comfortable in their body and pick up choreography in a year or two is just not realistic. It takes it takes a long time, you know, to put in your 10,000 hours. As far as the songwriting process, that was a lot more exploratory and fun for us because Doug had been doing vocal training, learning how to use his voice. And I think throughout his life, people would say, oh, you have such an, you have such a remarkable voice, Doug, just in, in terms of his speaking voice. So that process was more of a matter of, okay, you've learned how to use your voice, but what would you sound like as an artist? Because we don't want to imitate someone. Um, we've got to create your own unique sound and style. And that process was fun because there's no rules. And going into the creative world, I think one of the bigger challenges for someone like Doug is, especially coming from accountant, you want to follow the rules. You want to follow the steps that are mapped out towards success. And when it comes to being creative, it just doesn't work like that. I mean, um, Doug, can you uh, climb on that, the fact that uh, trying to diverge away from the rules, you know, you have been an accountant all, all your life. Yes. Was that Was that a terribly difficult process for you to go from rules to creativity? It was very challenging, to say the least. It You just, you really have to, you have to realize that you have to let all the, the old ways that you were doing things, you, ha you just have to let them go. And um, it's, it's also very very intimidating i i guess i'd have to say because um you know the way you've always done things all of a sudden you're being asked to do things that that are completely uncomfortable you're not used to um and and then you know you have to try them and as john said you know being creative and finding that unique voice or or um you know trying to to master choreography is not a snap type thing it's it's something that really takes time and process and and um you know just trusting yourself that you can do that and um so yes very intimidating very challenging and i'm very glad i went on the journey most excellent john talk about the uh filming some of the scenes all like music videos um what was your process of that I've been a huge fan of music videos my whole life. Obviously, that's reflected in my work as a dancer. And so we had al always imagined a foundation of music video storytelling. And I can't tell you, have, having made the film, completed the film, and started going through the process of going submitting to film festivals and having people react to it, how many times I thought in my head, 
gosh, should we have just made a straight documentary that ended in a concert kind of fantasy? Um, because it would have been so much easier to pitch it to people, for people to relate to it, um, to get into festivals under a documentary heading versus this weird hybrid that we made. So even in that, in terms of the creative journey, there was a lot of doubt for me. Should we have made a straight doc? But that that was never on the table in the initial conversations. It's more something in hindsight. Should we have done this? But I think what we created, um, just like accounting, uh, our references to accounting, it does not fit in a box. It's very creative. It's very out there. And I just don't think that this movie will feel stale anytime soon mm -hmm. because it takes so many risks. And for those people who are going to appreciate that or appreciate creativity in storytelling and filmmaking, they're going to have time to discover this film. It's not, it's not a, um, a, I wouldn't say a trend, but it's not kind of time sensitive. It's kind of this timeless story of of Doug, and it represents a decade of his life. It's a portrait of of this character during a decade of his life. Wow, most excellent. And Doug, could you tell us about that uh, that final con your fantasy concert? How did that actually came about? Well, that was that was a combination of John's uh, creative ideas and and um, things that we had talked about that we always wanted to do if we were to do a true concert piece. We knew we wanted to have elements of uh, costuming and color, and um, we just didn't want it to be a straight ahead concert at all. Um, and and so that's what how we kind of ended up with. Um, what we have, and um, you know, there were there were characters that that I remembered from my life um, going way back when I used to go to dance clubs and and go out and have some fun, and um, so we tried to kind of incorporate those in some places in the live concert, like with a DJ and and um, yeah, it was just and the costuming and the makeup and the and all that stuff was just. Um, incredible, uh, challenging to do all that for sure, but um, but it's not a boring concert gig. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't look like a boring concert. I I was nope. I was very convinced that was a fun place to be that night. It sure was. <laughs> so let me uh, start wrapping things up, John. What's next up for you? Well, I'm going to be um, writing new stories and doing more online teaching, whether it's with movement or acting. Um, I also have a background as a casting director. So continuing to coach people like Doug, who are new to the arts um, and maybe need help with public speaking or feeling more comfortable on camera or in front of an audience, uh, as well as continuing to work with uh, professional talent and working on set, uh, in, whether it's in movement or as a director. Most excellent. And Doug, are you still pursuing this dream or are you, fin or are you finally given up to retirement? Well, uh, that's an excellent question, Gig. I think my wife would like me to give it up to retirement sometime soon. Um, whether or not I, I decide to fully just you know, go off into the sunset and retire. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm still enjoying life and I still feel great. And um, so as far as I'm concerned, hey, you never know. Another project is always a possibility. Most excellent. Well, gentlemen, congratulations on this documentary. I'm an electric lampshade. Thank you uh, for carrying this conversation. And thank you, Doug, uh, for letting me witness your legacy. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye.